I humbly beg your pardon, my Lord Stark. Grand Meister. How many years has it been? You were a young man. And you served another king. Oh, how forgetful of me. This, uh, <clears throat> this belongs to you now. Should we begin? Can the treasury bear such expense? Oh. Lord Arryn gave wise and prudent advice, but I fear his grace doesn't always listen. Lord Stark, uh, uh, I meant to give you this earlier. <laughs> so forgetful these days. Uh, a raven from Winterfell this morning. This heat, on days like this, I envy you northerners your summer snows. Till tomorrow, my lord. I've been hoping to talk to you about John Arryn. Lord Arryn? Oh, his death was a great sadness to all of us. I took personal charge of his care, but I could not save him. His sickness struck him very hard and very fast. He, I saw him in my chambers just the night before he passed. Lord John often came to me for counsel. Why? I have been Grand Meister for many years. Kings and hands have come to me for advice since... What did John want the night before he died? Oh, he came inquiring after a book. A book? Yeah. What book? Oh, I fear it would be of little interest to you, my lord. A, a ponderous tome. No. I'd like to read it. The, the lineages and history of the great houses of the Seven Kingdoms, with descriptions of many high lords and noble ladies and their children. Umber, first of his name, born to Lord Hotha Umber and Lady Amaryllis Umber in the 183rd year after Aegon's landing. At last hearth, blue of eye, brown of hair, and fair complected, died in his 14th year of a wound sustained in a bear hunt. Well, as I said, my lord, a ponderous read. Did John Arryn tell you what he wanted with it? He did not, my lord. I did not presume to ask. And John's death? Such a tragedy. Did he say anything to you during his final hours? Nothing of import, my lord. Oh, there was one phrase he kept repeating. Uh, the seed is strong, I think it was. The seed is strong? Mm. What does that mean? A dying mind is a demented mind, Lord Stark. For all the weight they're given, uh, Last words are usually as significant as first words. And you're quite certain he died of a natural illness? Well, what else could it be? Poison. Oh. Disturbing thought. No, no, no. I, I don't think it likely. But the hand was loved by all. What sort of man would dare? I've heard it said that poison is a woman's weapon. Yes. Women, cravens, and eunuchs. Did you know that Lord Varys is a eunuch? Everybody knows that. Yes, 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 of course. How that sort of person found himself on the King's Council, I will never know. I'd take enough of your time. No trouble at all, my lord. It's a great honor. Thank you. I'll find my own way out. I bear this girl no ill will, but should the Dothraki invade, how many innocents will die? How, how many towns will burn? Is it not wiser, kinder even, that she should die now, so that tens of thousands might live? We should have had them both killed years ago. Brigands, most likely. They weren't thieves. They didn't steal nothing. 
They even left something behind, Your Grace. It's the King's hand you're addressing, not the King. The King is hunting. You're describing Sir Gregor Clegane. Uh, why should Sir Gregor turn brigand? The man is an anointed knight. I've heard him called Tywin Lannister's mad dog. I'm sure you have as well. Can you think of any reason the Lannisters might possibly have for being angry with your wife? Uh, if the Lannisters were to order attacks on villages under the king's protection, it, it would be... That would be almost as brazen as attacking the hand of the king in the streets of the capital. Oh. And sentence him to death. My lord, this... This is a drastic action. It would be better to wait for King Robert's return. Grand Maester Pysel. My lord. Send a raven to Casterly Rock. Inform Tywin Lannister that he has been summoned to court to answer for the crimes of his bannermen. He will arrive within the fortnight or be branded an enemy of the crown and a traitor to the realm. Give him milk of the poppy. King Robert's body was still warm when Lord Eddard began plotting to steal Joffrey's rightful throne. He wouldn't do that. He knows how much I love Joffrey. He wouldn't. Please, Your Grace, there's been a mistake. Send for my father. He'll tell you. The King was his friend. Sansa Sweetling, you were innocent of any wrong. We know that. Yet you are the daughter of a traitor. How can I allow you to marry my son? A child born of a traitor's seed is no fit consort for our king. She is a sweet thing now, Your Grace. But in ten years, who knows what treason she may hatch. My sons shall hold this honor after him until the end of time. In the place of the traitor, Edard Stark, it is the wish of his grace the Tywin Lannister, Lord of Castle Rock and Warden of the West, be appointed Hand of the King. <laughs> Lastly, in these times of treason and turmoil, it is the view of Council that the life and safety of King Joffrey be of paramount importance. King. Treason is a noxious weed. You should be torn out. Roots. Let us speak. I want to hear what she says. Treason is treason. As, as we sin, so do we suffer. This man has confessed his crimes in sight of gods and men. The gods are just, but beloved Baylor taught us they can also be merciful. What is to be done with this traitor? Kings. <laughs> I can tell you all there is to know about kings. <laughs> the thing you need to understand about kings For the past 67 years, I've known, truly known, more kings than any man alive. They're complicated men, but I know how to serve them. <laughs> and keep on serving them. <coughs> Aerys Targaryen. All the thousand, thousand maladies the gods visit on us. Madness is the worst. He was a good man. <laughs> Such a charmer. But to watch him melt away before my eyes, consumed by dreams of fire and blood. <sighs> Robert Baratheon, an entirely different animal, powerful man, great warrior. But alas, winning a kingdom and ruling a kingdom are rather different things. <laughs> they say that 
If a man goes through life with his battle visor down, he, he can often be blind to the enemies at his side. <coughs> now I serve his son, King Joffrey. May the gods bless his reign. He is a capable young man, strong military mind, stern. Well, the sternness in the defense of the realm is no vice. <coughs> well, it's far too soon to know what manner of king he will be, but I sense true greatness on the horizon for our new king. <coughs> true greatness. So what's the thing? What thing? About kings. You said the thing you need to understand about kings. Uh, uh, things? What? Uh, when you started, you... Never mind. No, I don't know. Uh, let me see you out, my dear. It's all right. No need. Yes, yes. Till the next time. arrived from the citadel this morning, Your Grace. The conclave has met, considered reports from maesters all over the Seven Kingdoms, and declared this great summer done at last. The longest summer in living memory. Well, the peasants say a long summer means an even longer winter. A common superstition. We'll have enough wheat for a five-year winter. If it lasts any longer, with a fewer peasants. The city's drowning in refugees, Your Grace, fleeing the war. We have nowhere to house them, and with winter coming, it'll only get worse. You command the city watch, do you not, Miss Lint? I do, Your Grace. And are you not a lord at my command? I owe my title and lands to your generosity, Your Grace. Then do your job. Shut the gates to the peasants. They belong in the field, not our capital. Yes, Your Grace. Don't get up. More ravishing than ever, good sister. What agrees with you? Forgive the interruption. Carry on. What are you doing here? It's been a remarkable journey. I pissed off the edge of the wall. I slept in a sky cell. I fought with the hill tribes. So many adventures. So much to be thankful for. What are you doing here? This is the small council. Yes. Well, I do believe the hand of the king is welcome at all small council meetings. Our father is hand of the king. Yes, but in his absence... Your father has named Lord Tyrion to serve as hand in his stead while he fights... Out! All of you, out! I would like to know how you tricked father into this. If I were capable of tricking father, I'd be emperor of the world by now. From this time until the end of time, we are not part of your realm, but a free and independent kingdom of the north. He has more spirit than his father. I'll give him that. You've perfected the art of tearing up papers. You can give him his father's bones back, at least, as a gesture of good faith. Look at the Starks, our reply, cousin. I will, Your Grace. Did you see my brother when you were the Starks' guest? I did. They have not broken his spirit, Your Grace. If you speak with him, tell him he has not been forgotten. 
I will. No worries. Safe travels, cousin. You have a deft hand with diplomacy. If that's everything. Uh, um, a raven flew in this morning from Castle Black. Trouble with the wildlings. That's why they're called wildlings. Somewhat less wild these days. Seems they've stopped killing each other and started following this king beyond the wall. Another king? How many is that now? Five? I've lost count. Lord Commander asks that we send more men to man the wall. Perhaps he's forgotten we're fighting a war. We have no men to spare. Cold winds are rising, and the dead rise with them. The Northerners are a superstitious people. According to the commander, one of these dead men attacked him in his chambers. Mormont doesn't lie. How do you kill a dead man? Apparently you burn him. One trip to the wall and you come back believing in grumpkins and snarks. <laughs> I don't know what I believe, but here's a fact for you. Night's Watch is the only thing that separates us from what lies beyond the wall. I have every confidence that the brave men of the Night's Watch will protect us all. Nice, said. Oh, thank the gods. I haven't had a proper shit in six days. I've encountered this problem before, my lord. The stresses of power often have this um, <laughs> insalubrious effect. Uh, two drops with water daily. I'm so grateful to have a man of your vast knowledge and wisdom on my side. Well, thank you, my lord. I can trust you, Pycel, can I not? Why, yes, of course, my lord. These are perilous times, and the Crown must forge new alliances. And these alliances must often be sealed in matrimony. Matrimony? Uh, yes. I'm trusting the Council with these plans, but the Queen mustn't know. We can't have her meddling in affairs that could determine the future of the realm. There's too much at stake. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Yes, I shall be silent as the grave. I'm brokering an alliance with House Martel of Dorm. Princess Marcella will wed their youngest son when she comes of age, ensuring their loyalty and their army should we need it. Marcella! Sent away to dawn. What is the meaning of this? No, please, please. You disappoint me, Grand Maester. I am your loyal servant. So loyal that you told the Queen about my plans to send Marcella to dawn. No, never. No, it's a falsehood. I swear it. It wasn't me. Ah, Varys. It was Varys, the spider. You see, I told Varys that I was giving the princess to the Greyjoys. I told Littlefinger that I planned to wed her to Robin Aaron. I told no one that I was offering her to the Dornish. No one but you. God, a eunuch has spies everywhere. Cut off his manhood and feed it to the goats. No, 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 no. No, no goats, half man. We'll make do. <laughs> How long have you been spying for my sister? All I did, I did for House Lannister. Always, your Lord Father, ask him. I've always been his servant since the days of the Mad King. I don't like his beard. What? Wait, wait. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> How many hands have you betrayed, Pycelle? Eddard Stark, John Arryn. Oh, uh, Lord Arryn. He knew. He, he knew the tr truth about, about, about the Queen, and, and the way he, he planned to act, to, t to tell King Robert. So you poisoned him? No, never. But you let him die, made sure he succumbed. <laughs> Lannister, I always served Lannister. Get him out of my sight. Throw him in one of the black cells. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, please, no, don't. You can't do this to me. For your trouble. As you know, Your Grace, it is not only the sworn duty of a maester to carry out the wishes 
of the house he served, but also to offer guidance and counsel in times of war. Your words are always wise and measured. If you could... If anything, a maester's duties become more urgent in times of war and turmoil. <laughs> I remember back in the days of King... You brought me something? Yes. Uh, essence of nightshade is as dangerous as it is efficacious. A single drop in a cup of wine suffices to soothe ragged nerves. Three drops will bring on a deep and dreamless sleep. Ten drops, however... I know what ten drops will bring. Your Grace, if I may ask... You may not. You must have a lot of work to do. I'm sure many brave men will need your wisdom soon. Yes, a, a siege is very... Be careful on the stairs, Grandmeister. There are so many. Your Grace. Find Bronn or Varus. Tell them I am here with Maester Pycel. Tell them I am very much alive. Yes, my lord. Would you like something for the pain? What happened? The murderer and traitor Stannis Baratheon suffered a stunning defeat at the hands of your father. Where am I? These are your new chambers. A little cramped, perhaps, but you don't need much room, do you? You are no longer a hand of the king. Oh. For your trouble. For the good of the realm, your counselors beg you to set Sansa Stark aside. I would like to heed your wishes and the wishes of my people, but I took a holy vow. Uh, your Grace, uh, the gods do indeed hold betrothal solemn, but... Your father, blessed be his memory, made this pact before the Starks revealed their falseness. I have consulted with the High Septon, and he assures me that their crimes against the realm free you from any promise you have made to them in the sight of the gods. The gods are good. I am free to heed my heart. Solaris, I will gladly wed your sweet sister. You will be my queen. And I will love you from this day until my last day.
intimate, lovely table. Better chairs than the old small council chamber. Conveniently close to your own quarters. I like it. What news of Jamie? Twenty thousand unwashed northerners have known about his escape for weeks. Collectively, you control more spies and informants than the rest of the world combined. Do you mean to tell me that none of you has any notion of where he is? We are trying, my lord. Try harder. What do we have, then? Rob Stark and most of his banner men are in River Run for the funeral of his grandfather, Lord Hostetali. In Stark's absence, Roose Bolton holds Harrenhal, which would seem to make him Lord of Harrenhal in practice, if not in name. Well, let him have it. The name suits our purposes far more than that useless pile of rubble. The Lord of Harrenhal will make a worthy suitor for the widow Arryn. For which I am extremely grateful to you, my lord. Lady Arryn and I have known each other since we were children. She has always been positively predisposed toward me. A successful courtship would make Lord Baelish acting Lord of the Vale. Titles do seem to breed titles. You'll leave for the Eyrie as soon as possible and bring Lysa Arryn into the fold. And the young wolf can add his own aunt to the list of people who've taken up arms against him. Far be it from me to hinder true love. But Lord Baelish's absence would present certain problems. The royal wedding may end up being the most expensive event in living memory. Summer has ended, hard days lie ahead. Not a good time to leave the Crown's finances unattended. Fully agreed. Which is why I'm naming you new Master of Coin. <gasps> Master of Coin? It would appear to be a position that best suits your talents. I'm quite good at spending money, but a lifetime of outrageous wealth hasn't taught me much about managing it. I have no doubt you will prove equal to this challenge. Here, here. What are you doing? Your father's gone. As the father of the realm, it is my duty to give you away to your husband. Now cloak the bride and bring her under your protection. Your Grace, Your Grace, 
my lords, my ladies, we stand here in the sight of gods and men to witness the union of man and wife, one flesh, one heart, one soul, now and forever. I vomited on a girl once in the middle of the act, not proud of it. But I think honesty is important between a man and wife, don't you agree? Come, I'll tell you all about it, put you in the mood. Killed a few puppies today. Show them. Come on, show them. Oh. Apologies, my lord. Old fingers. Roslyn caught a fine fat trout. Her brothers gave her a pair of wolf pelts for her wedding. Signed, Walder Frey. Is that bad poetry, or is it supposed to mean something? Rob Stark is dead. And his bitch mother. Write back to Lord Frey. Thank him for his service, and command him to send Rob Stark's head. I'm going to serve it to Sansa at my wedding feast. Your Grace. Lady Sansa is your aunt by marriage. A joke? Joffrey did not mean it. Yes, I did. I'm going to have it served to Sansa at my wedding feast. No. She is no longer yours to torment. Everyone is mine to torment. You do well to remember that, you little monster. Oh, I'm a monster. Perhaps you should speak to me more softly then. Monsters are dangerous, and just now, kings are dying like flies. I could have your tongue out for saying that. Let him make his threats. Hmm? He's a bitter little man. Lord Tyrion should apologize immediately. Unacceptable, disrespectful and in very bad taste. I am the king! I will punish you. Any man who must say I am the king is no true king. I'll make sure you understand that when I've won your war for you. My father won the real war. He killed Prince Rhaegar. He took the crown while you hid on a castle rock! The king is tired. See him to his chambers. Come along. I'm not tired. We have so much to celebrate. A wedding to plan. You must rest. Grand Maester, perhaps some essence of nightshade to help him sleep. I'm not tired! Two Valyrian steel swords in the capital, Your Grace. Freshly forged in your honor. Oh, careful, Your Grace. <laughs> Nothing cuts like Valyrian steel. So they say. Such a great sword should have a name. What shall I call her? Stormbringer! Feminist! Widow's Whale! Wolf's Bay! Widow's Whale, I like that. <laughs> Every time I use it, it'll be like cutting off Ned Stark's head all over again. We are so fortunate to enjoy this marvelous food and drink. Not all among us are so lucky. To thank the gods for bringing the recent war to a just end, 
King Joffrey has decreed that the leftovers from our feast be given to the poorest in his city. And I will examine you personally. She'll do no such thing. Oh, Your Grace. Uh, yes, well, this young lady sought my advice. She's see Kyburn. He's quite good. Kyburn? Deplorable man. Brought shame on the Citadel with his repugnant experiments. More repugnant than your gnarled fingers on that girl's thighs. Your Grace, I am a man of learning. My little brother had you sent to the Black Cells when you annoyed him. What do you think I could do to you if you annoyed me? I never meant to annoy anyone. But you are. You annoy me right now. Every breath you draw in my presence annoys me. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to leave my presence. Leave this wedding right now. Go to the kitchens and instruct them that all the leftovers from the feast will be brought to the kennels. Your Grace, the Queen Marjorie... The Queen said they were to is be... telling you the leftovers will feed the dogs. Oh, you will. Ready! Again! <laughs> I'm the king of the north! The Andals and the first men and Lord of the Seven Kingdoms. Long may he reign! Long may he reign! up late last night. So, does this mean I am a master of something now? Coins, ships... Lord Tywin and I already determined that I shall be the master of ships long before you... Lord Tywin, it's a great honor to have been granted a seat on this council. I the trial begins this afternoon. We only have the morning for affairs of state. Then shall we begin? Sandor Clegane has been spotted in the Riverlands, my lord. A coward and a traitor. My birds tell me the hound slaughtered five of our soldiers. I believe the phrase, fuck the king, was uttered. Disgraceful. What would it take to make the common soldier stupid enough to try his luck with the hound? Ten silver stacks seems a generous bounty. Make it a hundred. What else? More whispers from the east, my lord. The Targaryen girl. Daenerys has taken up residence in Meereen. She has conquered the city and rules as its queen. Conquered with what? She commands an army of unsullied, my queen, some 8,000 strong. She has a company of sellswords, the second sons. She has two knights advising her, Jorah Mormont and Barristan Selmy. And she has three dragons. Baby dragons. Larger every year, your grace. Mormont is spying on her. Us. No longer he appears to be fully devoted to her. As for Sir Barristan, it would seem he took his dismissal from the King's Guard a bit harder than anticipated. He's an old man. He wasn't fit to protect my son. Joffrey didn't die on his watch. Dismissing him was as insulting as it was stupid. Don't tell me you're worried about a child halfway across the world. A child with two seasoned warriors counselling her and a powerful army at her back, Your Grace. Lord Varys is right. I have been to Essos and seen the Unsullied firsthand. They are very impressive on the battlefield. Less so in the bedroom. Dragons haven't won a war in 300 years. Armies win them all the time. She must be dealt with. How, my lord? By force? Eventually, if it comes to that.
Can your little birds find their way into Meereen? Most certainly, my Lord Hound. Mm. Lord Tyrell, be a good man. Fetch my quill and paper. Basilisk venom, widow's blood, uh, wolf's bane, essence of nightshade, sweet sleep, uh, tears of lease, demon's dance, uh, uh, blind eye. I think you have made your point, Grand Maester. You have a lot of poison in your store. Had, Prince Oberyn. My stores were plundered. By whom? By the accused, Tyrion Lannister, after he had me wrongfully imprisoned. Grand Maester, you examined King Joffrey's corpse. Was it without question poison that killed him? Without question. This was found on the body of Dantos Hollard, the king's fool. He was last seen spiriting Sansa Stark, the wife of the accused, away from the feast. She wore this necklace the day of the wedding. Residue of the most rare and terrible poison was found inside. Was this one of the poisons stolen from your store? It was. The Strangler. Poison few in the Seven Kingdoms possess, and used to strike down the most noble child the gods ever put on this good earth. In the sight of gods and men, we gather to ascertain the guilt or innocence of this uh, uh, man. Tyrion Lannister. May the mother grant them mercy. May the father give them such justice as they deserve. And may the warrior guide the hand of our champion. It... I will suggest milk of the poppy to ease his pain, but he's completely insensate. Bloody mud. The cause appears to be a manticore venom. It is the Death's Head Manticore. Hmm. Yes, I've read a great deal about it. It's a horrible poison, usually Mantari in origin. Oh, yes, yes. there's nothing to be done. Yes, there is. May, may, yes. may I ask what you, what you think you're doing? Saving him. Your Grace, I wish it were otherwise, but Sir Gregor is beyond saving. Well, well beyond this, this man. Not even a maester, let alone a grand maester. That's for the best. No maester knows how to save him. That is exactly the sort of arrogance that had him expelled from the Citadel, Your Grace. His curiosity was deemed dangerous and unnatural. Rightly so, in my opinion. You're dismissed, Grand Maester. Your Grace, this, 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 this is my laboratory. Not anymore. You're the hand of the king. No, uncle. Clearly it would not be appropriate for a woman to assume that role. I'm merely advising my son until he comes of age and chooses a hand for himself. Your grace, I would be willing to serve provisionally as the king's hand until he becomes You're old a good man, Lord make... Tyrell, but I don't imagine you'll have the time. In addition to being master of ships, the king has appointed you master of coin. Oh, Your Grace. He called your experience and wisdom in financial matters unparalleled. He said he would be honored to have you represent the Crown's interests in the same. Well, the honor is all mine, Your Grace. <laughs> your Grace, in the past, on several occasions, a Grand Maester has served as the King's hand. The King uh, is named Kyburn, the new Master of Whispers. 
Oh, Chris. Him? This, this man? This, this embarrassment to the Citadel? Your Grace, what qualifications can he possibly have for this post? The qualification of loyalty, Grand Maester. That's far more than the eunuch ever had. Far more than many ever have. I must say, I cannot Uncle see Kevin, how... In light of your position as commander of the Lannister armies, it would please the king if you would serve as his master of war. No man living better deserves the title. That is kind of you to say. I would like to hear it from the king himself. But the king is very busy at this moment. He should be here, learning what it means to rule. He is learning. On this occasion, in his capacity as ruler, he's asked me to speak on his behalf. I return to the capital to pay my respects to my brother. And to you. And to serve the king. I did not return to the capital to serve as your puppet. To watch you stack the small council with sycophants. Sending your own brother away so he won't my be present. My brother has left the capital to lead a sensitive diplomatic mission. What mission? That is not your concern as master of war. I do not recognize your authority to dictate what is and is not my concern. You are the Queen Mother. Nothing more. You would abandon your king in his time of need. If he wants to send for me, I will be waiting for him. At Casterly Rock. Your Grace, Grand Maester, Lord Tyrell, uh, it doesn't matter. As the High Septon of the Faith of the Seven, I give voice to the will of the gods and am their foremost servant in this world. An insult to me is an insult to the gods. An assault on my person is an assault on our very religion. You were assaulted. I was, by those fanatics who call themselves sparrows. They humiliated me, they beat me, they left me naked and bleeding on the cobblestones. I am lucky to be alive. I heard this assault began in Littlefinger's brothel. Hi, Septon. This is a rather shocking thing to hear. I tend to both the highest-born and the lowliest amongst us. Even prostitutes may earn the mercy of the mother. So you were ministering to the needs of these devout prostitutes? A man's private affairs ought to stay private. What do you want from us, High Septon? Justice. I ask that you protect our faith by arresting these criminals and throwing them in the black cells. I ask that you execute their leader, this so-called High Sparrow. He is a threat to everything we hold sacred. If he goes unpunished... Then where do I find this man? This High Sparrow? The Iron Bank has called him one-tenth of the Crown's debt. Given the expense of rebuilding the royal How fleet... How much can the Crown afford? With winter coming, half what they ask. Less? You're the master of coin. How do we pay them? Well, House Tyrell could front the gold and the, the crown would pay us back in time or I'd have words with my daughter. You've already given us too much. No, we must arrange better terms with the Iron Bank. Absolutely. In person. Me. We must send an envoy to the Iron Bank, someone of importance, to show these bankers our respect. As the King's Master of Coin, I can think of no one more qualified. I would be honoured, Your Grace. The King's expressed concern about his father-in-law's safety on this voyage. He's ordered Sir Merrin to personally lead your escort. My very own King's Guard. Please express Safe my... travels, Lord Tyrell. Of course, of course. I'll give your regards to the Titan of Bravos. <laughs> the small council grows smaller and smaller. Not small enough.
you inside. I need to have a look at those feet. May I have the honor of presenting the newest member of the King's Guard? Please, Your Grace, he has taken a holy vow of silence. He has sworn that he will not speak until all his Grace's enemies are dead and the evil has been driven from the realm. I told them all. I told them. He's arrogant, dangerous. You don't get thrown out of the Citadel without good reason. And no one listened to my advice. So, here we are. And what he's done to Gregor Clegane, it's an abomination. We never sanctioned this, this experiment. And I, for one, think it will be in our best interest to have the beast destroyed. Can I help you? Why are you here? My mother. I was invited, my dear, to help deal with several troublesome issues, such as the Queen's imprisonment. Thank you for bringing it up. It's well past time we address the abuses I endured. Marjorie is the queen. You are not the queen because you're not married to the king. I do appreciate these things can get a bit confusing in your family. This is a small council meeting. You have no position on the small council. I'm the Lord Commander of the King's Guard. The Lord Commander of the King's Guard does have a position on the small council. And Maester Pycelle, would you sanction that statement? Well, I... Um, uh... I would say uh, Sir Gerald Hightower had a seat on the Mad King's Council. Uh, of course, that was the Mad King. King Robert saw things differently. King. What about Marcella's death, Uncle? Do you consider the murder of your own blood a troublesome issue? The same women who murdered Marcella have overthrown House Martell and taken control of Dawn. We've got a lot to discuss, all of us, together. And seeing as you cannot make us leave, we best get on with it. No, we cannot make you leave. And you cannot make us stay. Not unless you're going to have that thing murder us all. to avert disaster with our current predicament. This is, is High Sparrow. I have dealt with fanatics of every description, Your Grace. Not setting them off. That's the most important thing. You are beset with enemies, both within and without. What are you doing here? I am advising the King on our current predicament. Leave. I am a member of the Small Council. The King's Is small... this a small council meeting? Obviously not. I'm here to lend my wisdom and my support. Thank you for your counsel, Grand Maester. That will be all for now. Your Grace. be a royal announcement there is why wasn't I informed there is to be a royal announcement in the throne room at this very moment where are you going to stand by my son your place is in the gallery with the other ladies of the court
Lords and ladies, the faith and the crown are the two pillars that hold up this world. One collapses, so does the other. The father judges us all. If you break his laws, you will be punished. After conferring with His Holiness, the High Septon, we have determined that Loris Tyrell and Cersei Lannister's trial will be held in the Great Sept of Baelor on the first day of the Festival of the Mother. Furthermore, after much prayer and reflection, the Crown has decided that from this day forward, trial by combat will be forbidden throughout the Seven Kingdoms. The tradition is a brutish one, a scheme devised by corrupt rulers in order to avoid true judgment from the gods. Cersei Lannister and Loris Tyrell will stand trial before seven septons as it was in the earliest days of the faith. Seven blessings to all. Money. Later, go away. Brad Leicester. The king. Elsewhere, I'm afraid. What's the meaning of this? I was told that. Well, I have more important things to do with my time than waste them in Please, the presence. Please, Grandmaster, I bear you no ill will. Please forgive me if you can. Whatever your faults, you did not deserve to die alone in such a cold, dark place. But sometimes before we can usher in the new, the old must be put to 